Now, Butters, we shouldn't fear AI, but rather understand how to use it in ways that can make our lives better, McKay. <laughs> what if I told you that this isn't actually a clip of the real South Park? You'd probably say, well, y yeah, of course. Obviously, that looked terrible. Oh man, that's not cool. Seriously, that is not cool. This is the latest AI tech causing a stir online, basically a fully AI-generated episode of South Park. At least, that's what they claim. And not just an episode, a piece of technology called AI Showrunner that can create countless AI-generated episodes of South Park. They say that all you need to do is select your characters, location, type in a few sentences for the prompt, and voila, it will create an entire episode of South Park for you. The thing that they don't really mention is that the episodes are really Really, really bad. Here's what the CEO of the company responsible claims that this software can do. Essentially, what the AI showrunner does is create episodes of South Park for you. All of this is created by AI showrunner. Not just the dialogue, it animates, it does the voices, it does the editing. For the TV episodes, AI showrunner can just generate episodes, or the user can create a prompt and create TV episodes based on a two sentence prompt. People said AI can't tell a story. Well, it can. Eh, personally, I don't think this can be considered a story. And to be honest, I'm not convinced that this technology is doing everything they claim it is either. And as someone who watches and analyzes a lot of South Park, as well as other written media, I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at some of these AI-generated South Park episodes and break down exactly what does and doesn't work, whether or not this tech does what they say it does, and what it means for the future of AI-generated content. OpenAI is so powerful that it has to be something that everyone can use, control, and contribute to. Or else AI will be controlled by corporations who just want an unfair advantage like Cartman does. The episode they decided to highlight when showing off the technology, I guess is called Westland Chronicles. Though the episode begins with what is clearly just the intro sequence from the show. To be clear, this intro sequence is not AI generated. It's just ripped from South Park. So right off the bat, they are misleading people. The episode starts with an establishing shot of South Park, but then enters the school, where the boys are just standing around. Dude, have you heard about Cartman's favorite show, Westland Chronicles? The story is about how Cartman's favorite show, Westland Chronicles, is coming back for an entirely AI-generated fifth season after previously being canceled. Cartman is stoked about it, and the other boys don't seem to care much and think AI will do a bad job writing the show. You guys can keep watching your lame non-AI TV shows while I enjoy a thrilling new season of Westland Chronicles. Fine, you enjoy your AI-generated season. We'll stick to shows written by actual humans. Okay, so right off the bat, I imagine you can see how limited this is. For one, none of the voices really sound like their actual characters. These AI-generated backgrounds are improperly proportioned and generally just look bad. The characters are tiny, and the blocking is just non-existent. That establishing shot showcased South Park and then immediately cut to the interior of the school into a close-up, failing to actually establish the location at all. And every single scene looks like this. Characters just stand around awkwardly with no actual sense of geography. The ways the cameras cut the close-ups are often horrendously framed, especially with adult characters in some of the other episodes. They sort of have a sense of the characterization in the absolute loosest of terms. They know that Cartman is often at odds with the other boys, and that he's usually promoting something they have a problem with, this time being AI episodes of TV, obviously. But there's absolutely zero sense of story or progression in this entire quote-unquote episode. I guess the B-plot is that Bisney, the Disney stand-in who also produced the AI Westland Chronicles, is trying to create an AI robot pig named Met Porker who tells jokes. Why did the chicken cross the road, Met Porker? To get away from those filthy foreigners, of course. What? That's not right. Met Porker apologize. The idea here is that this AI pig immediately becomes racist and a problem for Disney as a company, and these researchers need to shut it down. Obviously, Met Porker is a pretty uncreative name alteration mashing up Matt Stone and Trey Parker's names, which sadly might be the most creative thing in this entire story, but it's definitely not an AI creation. They for sure wrote the name Met Porker. There's a little part of the scene where you can actually tell that the creators of this technology are fudging the tech's abilities a bit. These backgrounds are clearly AI generated, you can tell because they don't look good. When the researchers decide to turn on the AI, you can see a countdown on a computer screen to the left of the researcher. However, it's very clear that this was done in post-production and not by AI itself. You can tell from the way that these backgrounds look that the AI doesn't have any sense that these are computer screens. Plus, for a couple of frames after the countdown completes, you can actually see the image on the screen blink off, and then for one frame it becomes blue again, as seen in the wider shot. They were basically just keying out this screen and adding in their own graphics. 
like. I'm also pretty sure that this glowing effect when the pig AI turns on was done in post-production. The entire thing is just filled with these small alterations that the team made to make this look more polished than it actually is. A clear attempt to mislead people into thinking this software does more than it actually does. There's an establishing shot of an AI-generated Disneyland later that then awkwardly transitions to appear to be outside of these windows, and then it just fades away, leaving these windows blank. The AI definitely did not craft that transition. That was a keying effect that they were too lazy to maintain in every shot. Or if it was AI, it's just an example of a bad transition. I am fairly certain that this quote-unquote episode is made up of a wide variety of different prompts that they then strung together to make the loosest connections for their story. The kid's story in particular has absolutely zero sense of progression. There are other scenes between the ones I'm going to go through, but I wanted to highlight the disconnect between all of the scenes with the kids. In their second scene, they learn about AI from Mr. Garrison and debate it in class. Of course, they're just standing around in a massive classroom that has no desks. Can AI even think like a real person? Shut up, Kyle. AI is the best thing that ever happened to us. In their third scene, they're watching Westland Chronicles at one of the kids' houses. Everyone thinks it's bad except for Cartman, and they argue about it some more. Are you seriously not seeing how bad this is? They're riding tricycle horses and chasing starfish. Honestly, I'd prefer if this was showing characters riding tricycle horses or chasing starfish, because at least it's something interesting to look at. In their fourth scene, they're all at McDonald's for some reason, and once again, the kids are just debating whether or not the AI-generated TV shows are any good. Cartman likes them, the other kids don't. Hey! What's wrong with AI TV shows? I think they're pretty sweet. In their fifth scene, they're back at school and being taught about AI again for some reason, this time by Mr. Mackey, who, by the way, is not a teacher in the show. He's a guidance counselor. And he also presents the subject to them like they haven't learned about it yet. Today we're going to learn about a very important topic, artificial intelligence or AI, McKay. One of the most unintentionally funny details is that the AI cannot pronounce McKay, so it pronounces it McKay. McKay. It also doesn't seem to be able to do Mackie's accent in any way. We get a scene where Randy is obsessing over the AI TV shows, but Stan says he's trying to do his homework. Obviously, we don't see these things that they describe, though I think my favorite detail in this scene is that the AI generated Kip Drordy's house for some reason. You can see his picture on the wall. And the final scene with the kids is that they're all playing D&D, but still arguing about aspects of the AI generated TV shows like Westland Chronicles. Okay, so I actually want to turn to Trey Parker himself to talk more about this and writing in general. Each individual scene has to work as a kind of funny sketch. You don't want one scene that's just like, well, what, the, what was the point of that scene? This entire episode breaks every single writing rule that Matt and Trey have. There is not a single hook in any one of these scenes that I just showcased. They're almost entirely interchangeable, just characters rambling about AI over and over. There's no game, there's no sketch, there's no story, and there's just absolutely no sense of South Park at all within this this AI-generated mishmash of sequences. Let's look at the B story of this episode too, about Met, Porker, and Bisney, which only tie into the kid's story in the loosest ways. Another major problem with this entire episode, I'll keep calling it. The first scene we talked about, they turn on Met Porker and he starts making racist jokes, so they try to workshop them to be less racist. In the second scene, they show Met Porker different Bisney characters so that he can improvise some jokes, and he immediately makes them racist again, so they decide to shut him down. You know how Elsa has ice power? right? Well, I guess you could say she's really cool with ice. Immigration and customs enforcement, that is. Though, I think the words joke and racist probably have the loosest definitions possible here. This is just like word association. Elsa, ice, okay. So the researchers decide to shut Met Porker down, but the next scene is just the news about Met Porker somehow getting out and being reported on. Basically, Bisney gets in hot water because they've created a racist AI pig. Except that this just doesn't have any further consequences moving forward in the story. The next scene is those same researchers being instructed to create more AI TV shows because of the success of Westland Chronicles. We want a whole army of AIs crafting our new shows and movies. But they don't actually show the research researchers then doing this, instead they just show them doing another experiment with Met Porker, even after shutting him down, allegedly. This scene has a ton of action beats that are described in the subtitles, but obviously the tech is not capable of showing these things happen. It describes Met Porker jumping out a window and escaping, and that's where his story ends entirely. They never show him again. Then there's a scene of the WGA striking because of AI, and the writers are far kinder to AI than any actual writer I've ever seen. 
We don't mind AI being an assistant in the process, maybe helping with minor tasks, but the actual writing process should be left to the humans. And they, I guess, wrap this story up with the researchers talking to the Disney producer about how the writers are worried about AI taking over TV, and them all determining that they need to build tools to aid writers, not replace them. Which is ironic, given that I guarantee you there was not any actual writers involved in crafting this narrative. But this is literally the entire extent to which they tie the researcher story in with the South Park kids story. We've seen the backlash from the kids in South Park. W where did you see the backlash? These characters had absolutely no interaction with the kids, there's no connection to their stories, or window into their world. They did not see any of that backlash, and why would they even care about just the kids in South Park's reaction to this? It's clearly a lazy attempt to tie the kids' story into this story through poorly written dialogue. But then even this story on its own has completely disparate elements. We can take these beats, which are basically the beats of your outline, and if the words and then belong between those beats, you're f***ed, basically. You got, you got something pretty boring. Just about every single aspect of this AI-generated episode has the words and then between each beat. No, 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 it should be this happens and therefore this happens. But this happens, therefore this happens. This is pretty simple writing advice, but this AI-driven story cannot even deliver the most basic of story progression, let alone deliver anything remotely resembling a multi-act structure. There are maybe a couple beats in Westland Chronicles that qualify as therefore, not, and then. They create a racist AI, therefore the news reports on it. Westland Chronicles is a success, therefore Disney orders more AI-driven shows. But there is absolutely no sense of cohesion between any of these stories story beats, and many of them are just repeating themselves over and over again. This, simply put, is not a story. This happened and then this happened and this happened. That's not a movie, you know, that's not a story. It tries so hard to preach its AI should be used as a tool message, but here's the thing. Based on the way this was clearly stitched together in post, I don't think that this episode came out fully formed as they presented it, meaning this story should have been aided by a human in the creative process. That's what makes the complete lack of any sense of story even even more embarrassing. It was clearly guided by somebody very poorly. And you can tell that these AI-generated episodes were being crafted by these tech bros because every single other premise also has to do with AI in some way. Every single one. There's one where Cartman wants to replace actors with deepfake technology. There's one where a teacher from Chapman University decides to teach the kids about simulations. Another that's specifically about the AI apocalypse. Not a single story about anything else. And yes, I'm being very harsh on this because this company decided to release this tech on the heels of the WGA and SAG strikes, where one of the major issues at stake is the studio's attempts to replace these workers with AI. A completely tactless move with wholly transparent attempts to make themselves appear pro writer when clearly they are not. And the company has incredibly lofty ambitions with this technology. Here's what they say they want it to become eventually. We're building a simulation where AI characters live 24-7, grow, and have rich stories. Every week of simulation, time, a 22-minute episode is generated of what happened in the AI's lives. Imagine reality TV for AIs. I do find this ambition fascinating, especially because I think the idea of this being reality TV for AIs is far closer to what is possible than what they're claiming it can do, which is create an episode of narrative television. But even reality TV requires so much editing and manipulation to craft any sort of story. I think Maybe with that much post-production, you might be able to craft something watchable out of what this showcases. Maybe this tech being guided by anyone remotely creative could create a more watchable product, but it's still only capable of showing characters standing around talking. And yes, even though I don't believe this tech is yet capable of what they're claiming it can do, in its simplest form, it is still impressive, technologically. Just being able to craft a generated scene by clicking characters and typing in a prompt is crazy. But here's the other thing. They chose a show with a very simple art style that is much easier to replicate. They also chose a show that has hundreds of episodes worth of scripts to feed into their AI to help determine how these characters act. They chose what should be the most AI-friendly property to experiment with, and it still looks and sounds pretty shitty. Yes, South Park is a pretty simple show animation-wise, but there's still actually animation. The characters don't just stand around in random spots and talk to each other. There's blocking. There are action sequences. They show the characters do anything. This 
does not. It's an impressive experiment that I believe they are manipulating to appear even more impressive than it actually is. Now, they've claimed that their use of South Park is simply an experiment and that it's not for commercial use. They aren't affiliated, obviously. I'm very curious to see if we'll see any legal ramifications from Paramount or South Park Studios, but their hope is to use this technology for other properties or wholly original properties. But it's also clear that they chose South Park because it would be the easiest to showcase this technology due to its simpler style and massive library of scripts. I find it very hard to believe that they'll be able to do this with other IP, existing or original. It's going to require an absolute fuck ton of information to feed into the system, so we'll see. They also have episodes showcasing that they can insert original characters into the narratives, even avatars of real people or yourself. I don't want to go over any of these other episodes of the AI-generated South Park. You can check them out if you want to, but let me tell you, they're hard to sit through. Really makes 20 minutes feel like an hour. Ultimately, I think these folks are overselling what this tech is capable of, and releasing it at an incredibly irresponsible time. I'm certainly curious to see how it evolves, but if anything, this is a pretty great showcase of exactly why we need actual writers crafting narratives, even for just the most basic of structure and story progression. Something that, ironically, the last season of South Park made very clear in the episode Deep Learning. Unfortunately, I think studios and companies will see this tech, even if they're embellishing its capabilities, and jump at any chance to prolong the strikes and continue to withhold any meaningful negotiations with the WGA or SAG-AFTRA. But that's all I've got on this one. What do y'all think about this technology? Do you think it's really doing what they claim? Or like me, do you think they're stitching together a few technically impressive but disparate experimental scenes to make it look like they've generated an entire episode of South Park? I thought this was really interesting and definitely worth talking about for the little writing lessons alone, but also support the WGA, support SAG-AFTRA, and don't let technology like this replace real people, especially in creative endeavors. It's a recipe for disaster and garbage boring ass media thanks for tuning in and i'll see you next time peace i stay mellow watching johnny two cellos he talks cartoons he's a really cool fellow he keeps you posted on adult cartoons if that's what you're into then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal feels like saturday morning cartoon material johnny two cellos watch him on youtube now enjoy this groove and bust a move